my channel. Today's video is going to go over RG programming, integrating that into Redline Crimson, and I've got a really good example of something we worked on in the advanced environment of RG. Uh, pretty much the application here consists of a Kolachi manufacturer with a conveyor line here um, and a pneumatic, uh, a pneumatic actuator here at this point directing the Kolachi either left or right for casing. And so um, what we propose for a solution here is a photoelectric sensor, a Q4X from Banner, and it's sensing the, co the Kolachi packages coming down the line. And as it's doing that, it's sending that input into a FEN20, and the FEN20 is starting a counter, and it's counting all the way up to a certain preset value. And that uh, preset value then expires, and it sends a it energizes a pneumatic actuator to turn on or off for an entire uh, cycle. Uh, and then we have an HMI small CR1000 HMI that is just displaying those counts and what side it's on as well as the count for the day. So I started most of my project in the flowchart RG environment and it's great when you can get most of the logic done in that environment but after you need maybe a third counter or a third timer you have to convert your program to RG Pro and so I did the rest of my project in RG Pro so I want to go over that and I want to talk about uh, how you integrate between RG and Crimson as well and here's a nice picture of the panel we put together for the customer. Okay, so uh, overall here is the finished product and in this video if you can see I'm holding on to a Q4X <laughs> trying to count that all the way up so once it starts counting uh, to that preset value the light will turn on so the light will turn on for a preset value and then turn off again for that preset value as well. And so here we're turning on this relay that's turning on the pneumatic actuator. And you'll notice we actually have two FEN 20s in this box because we're actually um, using the same program for both lines. Um, and then the Ethernet cables here are just daisy chained together. So we are communicating to this Ethernet cable we're, we're able to access the HMI and all three uh, and all two of the Fen 20s from there so that's pretty neat you get that integrated switch in there okay so now that you've seen how that works if we go into the logic of the RG program you'll notice that I converted to RG Pro this environment is actually RG Pro 3.0 and we're able to do a few nice things called call functions. So that's pretty neat. Um, I'm not sure if that's released yet, but it will be. So here we have the program that was converted. So my Q4X is input value 4. When that is energized, it starts a counter and I count 1 and I get up to a preset value here I'm allowing the operator to enter that preset value through the HMI so what this is called is a variable an Elias variable and as you can see here I've got a lot of them on my left hand side and these variables I basically assign a word and or a bit to it depending on whether I want to use it just a, as a as a bit or if I want to use a whole word. In this case, RG, a PLC to RG1 is a whole word, zero. And the way that these are allocated in the Fen 20s is we have, we have PLC to RG variables assigned at MADBIS register 17409. So when we're addressing our variables in, in the FEN20, word 0 is going to start at 17409. 
and this is only for Crimson. If you're using another Modbus device, it might be 17408. And I'll go over that in the addressing of Crimson. If I'm doing an RG to PLC variable, which is anything that I'm sending from the Fen22 to the PLC to the HMI, it's going to start in my 16385 bank of registers. And uh, the PLC to RG variables are registers that I'm I'm sending from the HMI to my Fen20. So uh, I this is all in the manual as far as where these variable banks start out, the register banks start out. Okay. And so as we move on here, the RG Pro environment, you've got a condition and then you've got whatever assignment you want to do. If you want to turn on an output, that would be a coil. If you want to turn on an out, a timer or if you want to just do a comment or start a counter or reset a counter, this is where you would just add those blocks. So once my counter one expires, I want to turn on this output, which in this case is my pneumatic actuator and see how I wrote all of my comments here to try to outline as much as I can for the customer. I'm also turning on this timer and it's a timer preset by the HMI which is doing something different here uh, but I left it in there and uh, we're, we're so once that expires which means that my my uh, pneumatic actuator is on and my Q4X is energized. When these two things are happening and notice that I have my AND sign there, I want to start counting two. And again, we're doing a preset value coming in from the HMI that the operator is going to uh, put in for the day. So I'm starting my counter two. So as you can see from my drawing here, counter one is for when the actuator is off position and counter two is for when my actuator is in the on position. So we're directing traffic here and so I'm using two counters for that. So once counter two expires, then it is when I want to reset counter one and counter two and the process will start all over again. And that's pretty much the the core logic, it's about four, four runs there. And um, my next conditions here are, are mostly uh, additional features. So in order for me to send my RD to PLC variables to the HMI, I have to create a true condition here and assign that value. So here, for example, uh, my destination is going to be RD to PLC register one. And what is that going to contain? Well, that's going to be my counter. So I want to be tracking that counter in, uh, in, in my HMI. I want to be able to see that live count. So likewise, uh, the expression here is count with parentheses and then the actual name of the counter. If you're working with timers, timers in RG are also considered counts. So likewise, you have your count and parentheses your timer value. And then I'm just sending all of the inputs and outputs to my HMI to monitor that. And these are going to be what I would consider read tabs in Crimson. And then I've got a PLC to RG register 3. And what this is giving me the opportunity to be able to reset from the HMI directly. I, if I have a need to reset those counters, um, that's going to automatically reset counter 1 and counter 2. So there's that, and then um, I'm also, I left this in, it's a HMI tag to basically to force on out the value one, which is my green light in this case. So if I wanted to manually force things on, I would be able to do that. And so um, I did that the same with alpha value two, which in this case is not being used for this project. And then over here, I've got I've got some stuff going on with my timer. So when um, and this is interesting, the exclamation point here is for something is not true. So 
I put in parentheses it's this entire um, statement here and this is when my timer one expires and my input value zero which is my pneumatic valve when those two things are not true I want to turn on my green light of the value one okay so that's what's happening there and then I put in some um, default information here so in case the operator never types in a preset value for my counters then what I want to do is assign a default value to those so if we go back down here whenever my PLC to RG register 1 which is my preset value whenever that is equal to 0 I want that to be a value of 10 so it's going to count up to 10 and uh, likewise with counter 2 and that's good when that is equal to 10 to 0 my default is going to be 11 so in this case if the operator wanted to go back into the program and or the machine maintenance people wanted to go back into the program and change this this is where you would make that change and also note that this is the value that you would want to enter and this is 1 plus the value you want to enter why because when counter 2 is reset and counter 1 is reset uh, it eats I think it like it starts counting when the last count value of counter one is uh, expired so it kind of eats a value of one so we kind of have to work around that and this is actually kind of automatic in the HMI program the way I built it and I'll go over that in a bit Okay. And here I've got a timer built in, and this is in milliseconds, so a thousand milliseconds is one second, so it's not noticeable here. And last but not least is my counter three function. And what this is doing is just, all it's doing is counting up every time my input value, my Q4X is energized. So, and then what I'm doing is I'm resetting that at midnight from my HMI to reset it right at midnight and it'll start counting up afterwards. And the preset value here is just an arbit arbitrary large value so this should probably never be reached. I would like to add here is if you don't know how to address things in RG what you can do is go to this little plus or minus keyboard shortcut and it gives you these these hot keys so if I were to if I wanted to make that um, input value 4 if I wanted to address that then what I would do here is if I would do control I I would delete that and do control I and I would go here to my slots uh, my IO on the Fen 20 is considered to be in slot 1 so if I go through the arrows here I can pick my input value and you'll notice it automatically addresses that um, and then over here on my left hand side if you want to create your variables and address them then what you would do here is uh, figure out some way to keep track of your RG to PLCs and uh, variables and that's what I did here I did a reference and then I did you know what word am I on Am I using the whole word or am I using just a bit here, for example, on my I.O. I just used word two and just a bit because they're just discrete I.O. Um, so you would just add a variable and likewise assign it. So this is actually a little bit different from what you would see in the RG environment that uh, is currently released. It actually asks you what word number you want to assign. But for reference, you can you can um, you can look at that and look at the uh, word six dot zero dot sixteen means that I'm actually using the entire word. So here, um, for example, word two dot four means up word two and um, bit four. So this concludes pretty much everything that we did in the RG program. And we'll go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna um, 
how we're going to integrate this into crimson. Okay, so I have my crimson program open here, and you'll notice for Modbus TCP on the FEN20 or Turk multi protocol devices, we we use a Modbus TCP IP master, and so that's found under Modbus and then TCP IP master. And I've created two FEN20s here because I've got two of them in, in one um, HMI connected. So uh, obviously you set up the IP address for your, for your HMI, and if you want to, you can download over Ethernet, so you would have to likewise make the selection mode manual and type an IP address again there. And then uh, once you pick your protocol, you add, it automatically generates a little icon here. In this case, I renamed it to FEN20, and I just gave it the address, of the IP address of that FEN20. Notice ping holding register is zero. This could also be 16385, so um, it would work either way. I think the manual publishes ping holding register one if you're integrating into Crimson. But if you're using RG, just it's not going to work. So um, you're welcome to try those two to either 0 or 6385. For my FEN20, the second one that I added here, it's the exact same settings, just the different IP address. And that's it as far as setting it up to your network there. Now, creating data tags, the only thing I did here really is I just brought in all of my RG to PLC values, which as you can see are the green because of read only I'm just monitoring those and then I have some write read and write and these are my PLC to RG variables so I've got counter 1 and counter 2 which doesn't really mean anything to the operator except um, other than to uh, and um, to set the counter and what I mean by this is when the operator this is the main display page when the operator clicks on configuration settings, go to line one, he'll be prompted to enter a value here. And so this is linked to my set counter tag. Okay. And I made it a data entry tag. So once I did that, if you'll notice on entry complete, I did a little complex code. And what I did here is some simple logic. This is going to uh, send um, send some changes to the PLC to RG registers, uh, which are in this case counter one and counter two in the RG code. So if um, if the FEN20, if the operator set up enters a value, which is the set counter internal variable here for crimson. If they, they enter that value, it's going to automatically enter it into my PLC to RG register for counter 1. But I also want to automate this in the sense that I want to add a plus 1 to that value and enter that value into counter 2. So it's kind of seamless. They never know that was going on in the background, but that's what that's for. And then same thing here for my set counter for line two. I'm doing the exact same thing. Okay, so that's really all that's going on there. Now you'll notice I have this third counter in, in RG is counter three. This is what I'm actually doing with it is I'm counting what's going on that, that entire day. So um, it's not doing anything here, but if you notice in my data tags, I created some, I created some, some time tags, and what I did is in your system functions, we have some, we have some pre-built functions for time, and as you notice, we have like get date, get date now, get now time. So for I wanted to display the date on the screen, so that's all I'm doing there. Same thing for time. You just plug that in. You do have to format to the format type here on that tag 
to time and date. The default is journal, so you just change that over. And then there's some extra settings that you can change if you wanted. For the hour, minute, and second, I'm doing what's called a get hour. We have a get min, get hour, get sec. And then in parentheses of that, I do a get now, so it's constantly getting that hour and getting that minute and second. And I am displaying those on the HMI. So um, now that I have these variables, what I can do for me to be able to reset that counter at midnight is I create what's uh, an internal flag tag. And this internal flag tag, what I've got it set at is to do a little complex code there. What's happening is just a simple if statement. So if hour, which we created up here, is equal to zero, which is midnight, and my minute is zero, and my second is zero, which means we're at the midnight hour, return a value of one, else return a value of zero. And then what we do here is enter the trigger tab we do an active on and what we want to do is make my actual reset flag tag that's going to my PLC we want to turn that on so you'll notice this is this is my this tag here is actually addressed it is 4174114 I'm just turning this on or off and that's going to be resetting my counter three. Now, so when that is, so I don't have a way to turn this off. I, I need to turn it off also, so it's just going to be turning it on. So what I want to do here is go to the trigger tab also, do an active on, and after three seconds, remember milliseconds to 3,000 milliseconds, after three seconds, I want to turn my reset off. So that's going to automatically reset at midnight and the counter back on after three seconds. And that about sums up everything that we did on this project and should give you a good idea of uh, working with Crimson and interfacing to RG and what all that RG is able to handle and, and do and give you options. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe and let me know if you have any questions or would like any um, information my my email is listed in the description box below thanks and have a great day